Hi there. In this short topic video, we're going to take a few moments to think about some of the consequences, some of the effects of a recession. Often in AS macroeconomics exam papers, you might be asked to evaluate the consequences of a recession. And in this short video, we're going to make a distinction between short term and long term consequences. And also a debate which is uh, continuing at the moment about whether there are actually some benefits of a recession, thinking slightly counterintuitively perhaps. So let's see, let's see what we get to in the next uh, five minutes or so. So one of the uh, causes of recession can be a, a big inward shift of demand. I've shown that in my diagram. Sometimes it's called a demand-induced recession. There could be, for example, a fall in exports, a big uh, decline in consumer spending, prompted perhaps by a fall in incomes or, or confidence. If the aggregate demand curve shifts to the left from AD1 to AD2, the equilibrium level of national output uh, will contract to Y to Y2, you're moving down the aggregate supply curve in the short term. The key thing is that if there's a, if the recession is deep enough, then it's going to cause national output to fall well below potential GDP, long and aggregate supply, and that causes there to be spare capacity in the economy. In other words, a negative output gap. Uh, this can lead to some deflationary pressure. It doesn't tell you what the rate of inflation is going to be, but there's certainly going to be some downward pressure on inflation. Now, what are some of the short-term effects of recession? I think the key evaluation point I'd like to start with is that the impact or the consequence of a recession depends in part on two things. One, what's caused it, and secondly, how long the recession lasts. In other words, is it a, a very quick V-shaped recession where the economy bounces back fairly quickly, or is it uh, more of a kind of uh, flat Nike swoosh where you get a downturn and then you get a pretty flat, uh, flat recovery which is delayed? Well, what are some of the consequences? Well, let's focus on different agents in the economy. First of all, businesses. Uh, in a recession, demand is falling, so we expect to see some, some businesses going to the wall, not no longer commercially viable. Uh, we see that in every recession, including often some, some well-known household retail names. So businesses uh, see their profits, their revenues and the profits go down. That's not true, of course, for all businesses. Some businesses, the, the demand is counter-cyclical, if you're producing an inferior good, then your revenues and profits may actually go up in a recession. But for businesses producing normal goods and services, revenues and profits will fall. And in theory, that should then lead to a planned decline in investment. That's called the negative accelerator effect. And that, if it happens, businesses are cutting back on investment, will lead to a fall in demand for the industries that make the capital goods, that make the machinery and the equipment and build the new factories. Second key effect of recession, of course, is unemployment. If there's a fall in aggregate demand, the demand for labour is derived from the demand for goods and services. So therefore, we expect to see a contraction in employment and a rise in cyclical unemployment or Keynesian unemployment. Governments often suffer in a recession because uh, a downturn in the economy causes a fall in tax revenues from direct and indirect taxes, income tax, VAT and corporation tax, for example. And they may well be committed to more welfare spending, particularly welfare benefits that are linked to people's incomes. So income support, for example. Again, that depends on the generosity of the welfare system and the extent to which unemployment does go up in a recession. So in the UK, in the last recession, unemployment went up to 8.5% of the labour force. That's not quite as high as people thought it would be. They're expecting it to be 10% which may have helped government finances, which had taken a big hit anyway. But normally, if the recession happens, government finances worsen. Think about it. Tax revenues are going down. Government spending, particularly on welfare, is going up. The two don't match, and there's an increase in the fiscal budget deficit and perhaps a big rise in the national debt. Recession normally leads to lower inflation. It's amazing how many students think recession causes higher inflation. Recessions are falling real output. It's fall in employment, it's a fall in real economic activity. And uh, in that kind of situation, lots of businesses desperate for cash flow, often desperate to survive, will offer discounts, often generous discounts, to offload their excess unsold stock. Indeed, if the recession is deep enough and lasts long enough, and depending where inflation was before the recession starts, you can get a recession causing sustained deflation in other words, negative inflation. 
So there we go. So some of the short term effects of recession covered in that slide then. Let's think about a country such as Greece. Now, Greece has uh, suffered badly, grievously, you could argue, in the last 10 years or so. Uh, they did extremely well from the mid 1990s onwards. See the, see the rise in real per capita income measured in US dollars went up from 16,000 US dollars in 1995 to uh, over 24,000 in 2007. In fact, nearly touching $25,000. Tremendous period of growth for the Greece economy, but as it proved, it was not sustainable. And you can see what's happened since the Greek economy has gone into recession. Now I'm just going to use my cursor here. The fall in, you can see the fall in real output. Real per capita incomes in Greece, US dollars, are now back at less than $20,000. In other words, per capita incomes in Greece, this takes us up to 2014, I believe, are now at a level last seen in 1999. Effectively, Greece is back to where it was 15 years ago. And I think that's a key takeaway point for your notes, that a deep recession can cause a sizable fall, not just in GDP, but if an, if an economy's population is getting bigger, there's an even bigger decline in per capita GDP. And the Greeks have suffered very badly indeed. Now, what about the long-term effects? So sometimes you're asked to evaluate the effects of recession. And you can talk about, if you like, the cyclical effects in the short term. Let's say six months, 12 months, a couple of years. I think it's really, really good evalu evaluation to start thinking or at least considering some of the longer term effects of recession. So if people who lose their jobs in a recession struggle to find work, then cyclical unemployment can lead to structural unemployment. And that's a, a really key point, particularly if the new jobs as the economy recovers require different skills from the jobs where, from the skills where jobs were lost uh, during the downturn. So one of the long-term problems is regional decline, regional economic decline, which oftentimes feeds on itself because of the fall in incomes and investor confidence. Uh, if the recession leads to a significant reduction in capital investment, indeed, if gross investment falls below that's needed, that which is needed just to replace depreciating capital or sort of worn out, technologically obsolete capital, then actually a country's capital stock may fall. So if there's a fall in investment is big enough, the capital stock may shrink. And in theory, that can lead to an inward shift of the production possibility frontier. And uh, if governments are struggling on the financial side, if they're, if they're running heavy deficits and if their national debt is going up, maybe the case, depending on the political and economic theories of the government that's in power, it can lead to a period of austerity involving cuts in public services in Greece's in terms, of course, the austerity was imposed by the Troika, IMF, ECB, European Commission, European Union, as part of emergency financial support. So recessions can have long-term economic effects. And here's another key evaluation point coming up. Recessions can have long-term social effects too. Social effects, really quite important. So, for example, if wages go down in real terms, it's going to hit living standards and affects demand. Recessions may lead to a widening in the gap between rich and poor, so a rise in relative poverty and a fall in an increase in poverty amongst low income groups. And of course, we can't, we can't uh, move away from the fact by thinking that a recession can cause social costs, loss of social cohesion, perhaps maybe increased juvenile delinquency, and can be a threat to democracy. But plenty of countries where recession is undoubtedly undermining people's trust in elected politicians, in organisations, in corporations, in banks, and we should never take democracy for granted. Now, I'm going to finish off by thinking about a little debate in economics, which is quite current at the moment. You may have come across it, and if you have, well done, because this is kind of just that left field stuff. Uh, there are two, here are two competing views on the effects of a recession. What is called the hysteresis effect? Hysteresis. Uh, this is the idea, is the negative view, really, that when an economy is hit by a recession, it can almost become disabled by a recession. And a fall in actual GDP over, let's say, two or three years may not bring about a, a significant recovery at all. Indeed, there's a risk of, if you like, a permanent loss of national output. Effectively, the production possibility curve shifting in. A trend growth rate may take a hit, may become negative, 
Possibly. It depends how bad the situation is. And that's because you get uh, productive capacity being taken away as companies invest less. Businesses are closing. Um, so the, the capital stock may shrink. And as we've seen in quite a few European countries, if unemployment is so, so high, let's say above 20% of the labour force, people may either stop looking for work or they may leave the country. A brain drain effect in search of uh, better employment prospects. So out of migration can cause it. So hysteresis is the idea that a short term deep recession can actually cause a much longer term permanent economic decline. The counter argument is called the creative destruction argument. And this is the slightly counterintuitive view that recessions can actually have positive effects. Um, this is almost, if you like, a comment on the bounce back ability of capitalist mixed economy free market systems that yes, recessions are painful. Yes, an economic downturn hits real incomes and investment and people's living standards. But the, the argument is that capitalism has an innate, innate inherent um, bounce rejuvenation property that, that uh, eventually economies bounce back and often even in a world of deflation, for example, and high unemployment, new business models, new businesses, new ideas start to emerge. Uh, some of the unemployed become entrepreneurs, but the rate of business startups might pick up. And sometimes, even if there's been a big lull in economic activity, economies pick up because of uh, new waves of technological progress, um, innovation acting as a catalyst for another burst of, of growth and new investment. So I don't know which side of the fence you sit on. I suppose if you're a pessimist, you would believe in hysteresis effects. If you're an optimist, you probably side with creative destruction. Or perhaps you see both happening. And of course, you'd want the balance, I, sp I suppose, to tilt to the right, not to the left there. So what we've done in this hopefully reasonably accessible video for you is just look at some of the effects of recession. We've been evaluating some of the effects, thinking about short term, long term consequences, thinking about consequences on the demand side, on the supply side. And uh, there's lots to look at. Choose your countries carefully and think about the consequences of a recession in each of them. Thanks for joining me. Take care.